Right, now before we begin today's broadcast, I have some important traffic news. Buses on the following routes, the 236, the 197, the 147, the 139, the 108, the 96, the 94, the 80, the 808, the 77, the 856, the 43, the 39, the 26, the 21, the 19, 16 and 13 are all running as normal as well as all other bus routes. Now, time is by fast whizzing by here at Guy Matthews YouTube channel, coming at you live by videotape from the Orbital Broadcast Bunker, Britain's first and only airborne subterranean studio. That was Pat White Muffin, who police believe can help them with their inquiries. He appears by kind permission of the YMCA, Tel Aviv. Now, let's get this video back on track before you at home click off. Welcome to Kai Mathy's YouTube channel and this month's Retro Roundup, where we look at video games that were hitting the shelves for the first time in years gone by. Kirby's Adventure, a platform game developed by HAL Laboratory and published by Nintendo for the Nintendo Entertainment System. That's the NES for you at home. It is the second game in the Kirby series after Kirby's Dream Land on the Game Boy, and the first to include the copy ability, which allows the main character Kirby to gain new powers by eating certain enemies. The game centres around Kirby travelling across Dreamland to repair the Star Rod, after King Dedede breaks it apart and gives the pieces to his minions. <laughs> that Kirby's Adventure was the second largest game in megabits to appear on the NES. Mm. Right. It weighed in at a hefty 6 megabits, that's about 768 kilobytes. HAL Laboratory's Metal Slade Glory takes the cake for the largest game on the NES with a whopping great 8 megabits, one full megabyte of data. Also, the final level of Kirby's Adventure leading to the last boss is directly based on Kirby's Dreamland for the Game Boy. The level is entirely black and white and the four areas are based on the Game Boy's four levels and the music is exactly the same as Kirby's Dreamland level 1. <laughs> Outrun 2019, a Mega Drive slash Genesis pseudo sequel to Outrun that takes place in the future. The objective is to race against the time limit in a rocket boosted car across four different stages around the world. Like the original Outrun, there are forks in the road before each checkpoint, however there can also be forks within a single route. The maximum speed of the car is indicated in the game as 341km per hour, that's 211.89 miles per hour in the Japanese version. 682 kilometers per hour that'll be 423.77 miles per hour in the european version and finally 1097.57 kilometers per hour that'll be 682 miles per hour in the north american version Nineteen ninety-eight now. Yeah, hey, uh, lad, I, I need to ask you something. Yes, what is it, Pat? Well, I've, I've got an issue with uh, with Mrs. White Muffin. You're married. Ah, uh, every Tuesday is drafts night, but she started turning the lights out. Okay, so uh, what exactly is the problem? Well, I was going to ask. Do you know where I can get a set of luminous drafts? Has it ever occurred to you that maybe she doesn't want to play drafts? Oh yeah, no, she does. She does, you know. Because when the lights go out, she puts her hand on my shoulder and says, OK, now it's your move. Don't you think that maybe she perhaps might be thinking of something else? Oh, OK, OK, yeah, I never thought of that. OK, OK, I won't take drafts out next Tuesday. Good. I'll get me Ludo out. Right, now, where were we with them retro video games? As well as the following games turning 25, in March 1998, Sega announced the discontinuation of the Sega Saturn in North America and prepared for the launch of its successor, the Sega Dreamcast. <laughs> 
Parasite Eve, a role-playing video game developed and published by Square. The game is a sequel to the novel Parasite Eve written by Hideki Sena, and it is also the first game in the Parasite Eve video game series. The story follows New York City police officer Aya Brea over a six-day span in 1997 as she attempts to stop the Eva, a woman who plans to destroy the human race through spontaneous human combustion. Players explore levels set in areas of New York City whilst utilising a plausible real-time combat system, along with other role-playing game elements. Parasite Eve was Squaresoft's first M-rated game and the first major American and Japanese game development collaboration for the company. Now, if you are new to this channel, you might not be aware that our lab card did his very first 20th anniversary retrospective review on this very game, and you can watch it here. I mean, again, I'm not in it, but it's still worth a watch. Parasite Eve is a 1998 survival horror action role-playing game developed and published by Squaresoft and released for the PS1, and this year marks its 20th anniversary. Now, if you watch that video, you'll know that the concept for Parasite Eve were based on a Japanese novel of the same name. The events of the novel take place one year before the game, and whilst no characters from the novel show up, events are referenced. There's also a movie and a manga series based on novels. Like most of Squaresoft's games, there is a soundtrack for Parasite Eve, and of course the music in the game cannot compare to the quality of the music on the soundtrack because it's orchestrated and sounds far better. Warhammer Dark Omen, a fantasy real-time tactics war game based upon the Warhammer Fantasy Battle tabletop game and figurines, and a sequel to the 1995 game Warhammer Shadow of the Horned Rat. Developed by Mindscape in conjunction with Games Workshop and published by Electronic Arts, the game was released for Windows PC and the Sony PlayStation. The game's story takes place within the Warhammer Fantasy setting and focuses on the efforts of a mercenary army to combat a threat to the old world by a vast army of the undead led by a powerful entity that has recently arisen. Whilst the game features similar mechanics to that of Shadow of the Horned Rat, it features a number of improvements, including greater 3D generated terrains, which were supported through the first generation Voodoo 3DFX 3D Accelerator Card FX, a more streamlined interface system and an improved army management system. I've got a special message to all smokers here tonight and watching at home or in your car or on the bus or on the train. Please do not put your cigarette ends into the fire bucket. It makes them damp and soggy and practically unsmokable. And our Keith relies on them. 2003 now, please, gentlemen. March saw the Game Developers Conference host its third annual Games Developers Choice Awards, and that saw Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic claiming Game of the Year. Also, Nintendo stopped production of the original Game Boy and Game Boy Color worldwide. <laughs> Come and get me! Bloody Raw 3, a fighting arcade video game developed by Aiting and Hudson Soft, and the first Bloody Raw game in the series to appear on the Sony PlayStation 2. The main feature of Bloody Raw 3 is the ability to transform into beasts, which is involved in all of the Bloody Raw games. Once a character transforms, they regain part of the health that they have lost and become much stronger and more powerful than before. <laughs> It's turned to a right video of first, innit? And by that I mean that one of our first episodes of Friday 5 Minute Facts was on Bloody Roll 3. Give it a gander after this video. Link in the description down below. Is, is it actually 5 minutes? Uh, it's 4.18 I think. Ooh, that's just enough time to boil an egg. Galactic Civilizations, a turn-based strategy video game developed by Stardock. The game is a remake of an OS2 series of the same name. 
A sequel, Galactic Civilizations 2 Dreadlords, was released in 2006. In 2015, Stardock released Galactic Civilizations 3, and in 2022, released Galactic Civilizations 4. The goal of the game is to eventually dominate the galaxy. It is possible to achieve victory through war, cultural domination, diplomacy, or by developing overwhelming advanced technology. <laughs> I bought some modelling clay and a wheel. Oh, what did you make? No, oh, I just pottered about a bit. Oh, oh, as we just said, this is the remake of Stardock's original game, Efforts, the space-based 4X game of the same name for Mac, developed in 1993. The 2003 version won Game at Year at Computer Games Magazine Awards and GameSpy's PC-based strategy game of the year. Now we come to 2013, the same year that saw the Game Developers Conference held in San Francisco, California. But before I go on, Pat reminded me that I was going to talk to you about the uses of cement, but I thought you'd prefer something a little bit more concrete, so instead let me tell you about a couple of games from March 2013. Now, it's true, they're not technically retro, but it will probably surprise you to learn that they are now 10 years old. Raider, an action-adventure video game developed by Crystal Dynamics and published by Square Enix's European branch. It is the 10th main game in the Tomb Raider franchise and a reboot of the series, acting as the first instalment in the Survivor trilogy that reconstructs the origins of Lara Croft. Tomb Raider was released for Microsoft Windows, PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360. Gameplay focuses on survival with exploration when traversing the island and visiting various optional tombs. It is the first game in the main series to have multiplayer and the first game in the series to be published by Square Enix after the latter's acquisition of Eidos Interactive in 2009. Bioshock Infinite, a first-person shooter video game developed by Irrational Games and published by 2K Games. The third installment in the Bioshock series, Infinite was released worldwide for the PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, Windows PC and Mac OS. The game is set in the year 1912 and follows its protagonist, Booker DeWitt, who is sent to the airborne city of Columbia to retrieve a young woman held captive named Elizabeth. Booker rescues Elizabeth and the two become involved in a class war between the nativist founders that rule Columbia and the rebel Vox Populi, representing the city's underclass. Elizabeth possesses the ability to manipulate tears in the space-time continuum that ravage Columbia. The player controls Booker DeWitt throughout the game fighting enemies and scavenging for supplies, whilst the computer-controlled Elizabeth provides assistance. Scott, it was never here. It's another Columbia. A different Columbia. The same coin. A different perspective. Hence. Tales. Dead. Alive. We have to go through to this other Columbia, but how? It's like riding a bicycle. One never really forgets. One just Another month, Pat, and nothing from Tony's book. Sadly not, lad. It seems that young Tony were tripping when these gems came out. But if I may, it would seem that there are a few games that we've talked about today that have outstanding sequels, and they indeed appear in Tony Mott's book. So we're not done with it yet. So Mr. B can have a month off. Or he could, uh, you know, have a bash at... Uh... Perfect dark on the N64 and tell us what he thinks. But he won't. Maybe we should ask Engage. Either way, that wraps up this week's video. Make sure you're subscribed, ladles and jelly spoons, as later on this month we will have gaming warden Henry Stanford Mount Fitchin, fantastic Mr. Connor, Mr. B Q C and his ukulele pigeons. Is he good enough? Uh, I see what you're do doing there. You expect me to say, I don't know. Is he good enough? Don't I you? don't know, I've never heard them. But to continue, Brigadier General Chumley Tip, Dickie from Richard York's Wargaming. Where no wargame remains unplayed, 
Allegedly. Well, quite. And of course, more from all of us here at the Orbital Broadcast Bunker, Britain's first and only airborne subterranean studio. So be sure to subscribe, click the bell, and I'll leave you with this. If there really is a tie between father and son, who wears it? Cheerio, see you Friday.